we're gonna talk about beef. You want beef? Why do you mean I want beef? Do you want beef? What do you mean? I'm saying do you want beef? Why the fuck do you mean? Whoa, 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 whoa. Not that sort of beef. Rather the beef as in browser exploitation framework. Now, this is a testing tool first designed to provide an effective client side attack vector and to exploit any potential vulnerabilities within the browser. That's not to say that beef is to be taken lightly. Beef looks past the hardening network perimeter of the client system and examines exploitability within the context of one open door. Neo. And that is the web browser. So if we frame this up. So in the left corner, we have the ball with the ring. And what we will do from this point of view is establish a beef server hosted in one of our platforms. It could be within the Kala environment, which I'll demo shortly, or within a Linux online server. Once we've established that platform, we will be able to generate an admin part of the control panel, which will give us a plethora of tools. And we will be able to hook in, and this is an important part of this, a malicious page whereby we can send to a unsuspected victim. So once the victim does click this malicious payload that we can either deploy via a malicious email, link fish campaign, shorten URL, a number of attack vectors and how we can actually deploy this, the sky is almost the limit here when it comes to the kind of exploitation and systems we can use within beef. Now beef will leverage using this hook system, which I mentioned to one or more web browsers and it's used to beachhead uh, for launching direct command modules and further attack against systems within a browser context. What's also great with beef is that it works with our Metasploit that we previously demoed in our last video. So that's enough of the theory. Let's get into how we can deploy this. Now, before I begin, tell him what he's won, Rick. He has won a disclaimer. So this video is purely educational, as the Penace's credo states, in order to build you must know how to destroy and rebuild so in that context you shall not misuse the information to gain unauthorized access to third party systems that you do not have consent to access this is a big thing guys beef is far from a joke and if you use it in a context to do malicious work and not in an ethical hacker context you can get into some serious trouble and it's free to obviously try, but use these hacks at your own peril, especially if you're using on your own systems. So with further ado, we shall continue. So I shall first demo what beef looks like within a standard Linux deployment. Typically this leverages two ports. This is port 3000 for the clients for the admin side and port 80 on the client side so you can see here as it's launched it's opened up on the loopback port on port 3000 and you can see the admin section here using a beef with the password i've set up and we can log in and here it is running locally the only disadvantage with running beef locally is that you cannot test further out a field onto a bigger WAN or internet environment. 
obviously if you just wanted to test personally that is fine i want to take it one step further and expand now there are tools which i have tested that can help deploy this without the use of using a linux server also look at my last video where we leveraged the proxy of ngrog now you can also use beef auto beef uh, ngrog beef over wan and beef ngrog v2 all of these leverage ngrog of course using that proxy methodology now if you're going to use any of these other git repos word of advice you will need a paid version of ngrog because the agent once you start it will only let you open one instance of ngrog so you can't leverage both port 3000 for the admin and port 80 for the client side you have been warned so rather than pay for ngrog which is quite expensive i must say ngrog give me a shout if you're going to give me a coupon code for my subscribers if not i have leveraged a coupon code i was able to obtain for linode so Linode is a popular cloud hosting provider and it focuses on Linux powered virtual machines and has a wide range of applications you can use and leverage and deploy environments, dev environments, production environments to your will. Um, so let's us crack on with Linode and get started. So as you can see here, we've accessed Linode, and now I want to start a creation of Linode on a marketplace. From here, we can select the region, uh, which I'm in the UK, that's fine. And we can also initiate a beef Linode instance. Good stuff. So once we've selected beef, we can provide a beef master password We can go to a shared GPU instance. We go for the cheapest one because we like cheapness. And we can try and create this now. Now the region, I already stated I was in the UK. So let's set that. And then we can create. And there we go. We're going to kill this one. Beef is you. So, let while that's baking, we can refresh our instance. All right, after a refresh, we have our Linode server up and running. So, we want to have this SSH access to the server. So, let's do that. Uh, we can SSH in. We can use the password that we previously used to set up the Linode server and we're in. Next we want to cut out the information that Linode has put into place for the Beef application itself so we can leverage the two ports that I previously mentioned. As you can see, we've cutted out the beef installation and now we have this URL. This particular URL is the endpoint URL. Also note here that Linode has provided us a HTTPS for this secure application that we're about to actually deploy. So if we take this URL, copy it and we open up chromium you can see what this actually looks like from the admin's perspective so the username for beef will always be beef and the password will be the Linode password for the server to access the admin side of things now that we're in we have a few things to actually note before we begin exploring the application itself we have this option here so we can actually go to a basic demo page or we can go to an advanced pre-populated 
page. So this uses a template in engine to essentially hook in the clients via the fish. Also to note it says each command module has a traffic like icon which is used to indicate the following. So green is the command module that works against the target target and you should and should be invisible to the user. So these are stealth attacks. This is a command that works against the target but may be visible, so not so stealth to be amber. Uh, the command is yet to be verified against this attack, so these are still experimental attacks. And red is the command module does not work against this target, so it can't actually be active on the red. Also, put your eyes to the left here where it says hook browsers. This is quite important. These are the browsers that are online, so these are the active sessions that you have deployment capability on, and you have also logged on to your phishing website. The next is the offline browsers, which I have either bounced or have left for whatever reason your site. So I want to leverage the fact that we can use this advanced option so target machine and we can see what happens so right off the bat the first thing I want to draw your attention to especially when it comes to these sorts of malicious sites is the fact the URL so this can be changed and manipulated with the correct skill set. Um, I can later demo if this is required for my subscribees. But essentially what I want to draw your attention to, especially when you're using uh, a Linode service, is that it will provide an SSL certificate. This will bypass most of the browser securities that disable HTTP access for insecure sites. So that's your first checkpoint to look at. The second one is this obvious URL, which looks dodgy as hell if you had any sense to click on it. However, like I just mentioned, that can be manipulated. It can be shortened. It can also be masked into a different link or even object such as a picture, file, PDF, etc. So not necessarily you're going to see that once you click the link. Once you land on the page, what you're seeing at the moment, obviously, with it's a beef website, talking about that butcher beef. But once you've landed on the website, it just looks like an average website, especially if you were to remove the URL front. So what are we seeing from the admin's perspective of it? Now then, we have ourselves a hook. Now you can see here, online browsers, it's game over for this user. It's, it's done. So if we click here, what we can first see from a reconnaissance perspective is that we have all the dump data for the particular host. What browser they're using, what system they're using, what size screen they're using, what IP address they're using. Essentially, it's an army knife of, of what you're messing with essentially so what can we actually do from here so once we've got this data we can use the beef command set now the beef command set is a swiss army knife of tools and modules that can be leveraged and they go into these color bands which i first informed you about now What's really scary is the amount of interaction you can do and leverage some of the JavaScript that's running against the browsers. So, yo. Now, this gives you an alert dialog box. And what this will do for the user once we execute this, well, I'll let you see for yourself. Now this is executed. We go back to the victim machine. And is it still running? Execute. Command. It fired. OK. 
here. And there we go. So says exactly the dialogue which I pushed for the user. So every interaction with this malicious website is in complete control from the hacker's point of view. Also, it gives them more leveraging tools to bypass your firewall and defenses. And like I mentioned before, it provides them a beachhead for launching direct attacks against your system through the command module just demo. Very scary stuff. So how much more can we actually exploit here? Let's dig further. So if we go into subdomains, uh, the subfolders, should I say, and into social engineering, we can exploit, let's say, Google Phishing. So Google Phishing is a plugin that uses the image tag of the XSFR, the logout button, or Gmail. Continuously, the user is logged out of Gmail. So this kind of spams the attack, especially if you're using the hook here. What this looks like in real world if once we execute against the user is that now you can see it's not the beef website we're actually displaying it is a Google Gmail so for example you've clicked the link it says you've got some message from Gmail for example then you start interfacing with this website and putting your Gmail account in and you can put your password in so once you've done that, you've signed in, and now immediately you're redirected to the legitimate website for Google. So what this does is a two-pronged attack. Let me just illustrate this because we love me some illustrations. So first, you're going to go to the website that was first malicious. Then you're going to enter your credentials, then be redirected immediately to the legitimate website. What this kind of two prone attack from a social perspective is, it will make the user think, why didn't my logins work the first time? If you're not immediately concerned at this point, you might even try to log in again and think everything's okay. At that point, your credentials have already disappeared. And now if we go into the command history, you can see here, completely been fished and hooked in. I have the credentials and the password for the said victim in this case and he's completely game over for that person. So if we continue again from a, another case study we can use LastPass. LastPass as well as Dashlane are vault like systems providing government type encryption for your passwords which is all excellent on the face of it. However, if your last pass or dash lane password gets compromised and you don't have any 2FA already activated on that front, that means all of your pass, not just the one that you entered, all of your passwords are now vulnerable. So what does this actually look like once we execute from a client's perspective? Once we execute this, Actually, before we jump into an execution, I just want to note one thing here. We can see here that the user is no longer online because they've turned into an offline browser. If you remember previously, I mentioned if they bounce off the malicious website, the user will no longer have attack capabilities. In this case, we already retrieved the passwords that we needed, but if you wanted any further attacks you'd have to further again get them to jump onto the website so let's just do that for clarity's sake and go back into the website now we're back in you will see dynamically that the host has now jumped into the online browsers in real time so it gives you a running log of the active and non-active users that you've hooked into whatever campaign you might be demoing as an ethical hacker. So if we leverage the last pass attack now, you can see immediately it comes up as a extension or pop-up for the user. So 
if you did simple reconnaissance beforehand and saw that the user was using last pass, this may be a prevalent attack to use. So let us start entering some dummy data in. And remember password, it gives you obviously all the functionalities that last pass would. And we hit login. Immediately the extension has disappeared, which is obviously concerning. Um, but someone might just try to launch the extension again or reboot or the browser, whatever action they might take. Nevertheless, they've already been owned. As you can see here with the last pass attack, it's more logging based and it will run a concurrent key log against every single keystroke ran against the user's keyboard to show the final login and username password for that user. As you can imagine, phishing in general when it comes to sites and framework techniques like this can be very, very dangerous for the user and which is why I wanted to make users aware that the type of things they need to look out for and the type of websites that can run these applications um, and what capabilities the hacker has from their perspective. Of course, you don't want to be running this without any consent. You don't want to be running this from a black hat perspective. You want to be a pen tester or a ethical hacker to experiment, to enhance your skill set and also to be on the blue team as it were for a defensive front um, to help clients educate their staff and further protect their infrastructure so i think we bullied this individual enough and we shall leave them with one last hook pardon the pun and we shall override their iframe with the classic. Let it roll. The uh, final nail in the coffin for that user, and they probably um, did what Elliot did and completely destroyed their hard drive after that happened. So, as you can see, that was the beef toolkit um a great exploitation framework from a pen tester perspective gives you a great set of tools and it can be very very powerful in the right or wrong set of hands again i hope you enjoyed the video you found this very educational again like and subscribe appreciate all the comments keep it going and peace out